believes that you know China is going to uh, do well from here on. And also, if you look at the Hong Kong ETF, yeah, you know, besides the price movement, the volumes were the highest that we have seen in the last five to six years on. So let me put it in context and go across uh, to the ball. Then you know, India has been the preferred market. The question is, will China outperform just in the near term? So India is the one that you want to be there on a structural story. But could that be a tactical shift to China? And will China come to the party finally? Let's put up, you know, all the headwinds for China and all the tailwinds for India. India, well, the big macro tailwind, low energy prices, the demographics are in our favor as well, consumption has been strong, onshoring as well as lower unemployment. Those factors have worked for us. While for China, well, the housing bubble has been an issue. They have been having their geopolitical issues, both with the United States, with Taiwan as well. And the business confidence has been depressed out there. The youth unemployment is another factor that's working against them. But if I just pull up a chart of MSCI India and compare it with China in dollar terms, you'll see it was pretty much working okay. And then from 2020 onwards, there's a bit of a breakaway that we saw in the MSCI India markets. And that's the reason why, in fact, you know, all the reasons that I put up for you on the screen, that's exactly the reason why, in fact, we did play out. And if you um, market weight of the MSCI AC World uh, IMI uh, Index, India, in fact, has taken over China out there. But the one we normally look at is the MSCI Emerging Market Index. And now there, India, what, around four years or so ago, the weightage that India was occupying was only around 8%. China was at around 45%. Now, they've quickly, uh, you know, uh, almost converged now because India is up to around nearly around 20%. And you have China, well, that's come down to around 25% or thereabouts. So just take a look at the big move that we have seen all the way from that 8% mark all the way to uh, around, uh, you know, the 20, 21% mark. And that's another reason why India has been getting a larger part of the funds. Now, Chinese authorities, they believe that they need to stimulate the economy and they want to see, uh, you know, the, them achieve the GDP growth target of around 5%. So a few measures that they've done. The reserve requirement ratio, they have cut it by around 50 basis points. They're talking about 20 to 25 basis points from year on. That could uh, free up close to around a tr trillion yuan for new lending. So that's point number one. The other one is the stock market, the capital market focus as well. And with the measures that they have come about, what could happen is it could increase the capital market participation. And point number three is the property market stimulus. You know, they've uh, spoken about reduction in the down payment as well as EMIs. And what could that lead to is higher consumption out there. So these are the three broad factors. Now, finally, what about India versus China? On a valuation front, well, just to refresh our memory, India is trading at nearly 21 times or China at around 11 times. And the flows which are, we have been seeing big, big redemptions in, uh, from China while you're seeing inflows into India. So will there be some kind of a switcheroo that's taking place? Indications are that in the past couple of weeks, we have seen that happen. So interesting to see, India appears the darling for the longer term, but in the near term, Will the markets turn to China for a bit of a fling? So that's important. Uh, Anisha, I wanted your